Assalamualaikum. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's debate. I'm your moderator, Abu Muhammad Ali. And today's debate will be between Brother Kenny and Mr. Star Spammy. Allow me to introduce the first debater. He goes by the name Star Spammy. He describes himself as a normal human being who loves human freedoms, scientific education, multicultural, truth, ethics, and integrity. He is also a skeptic who has been convinced that God can exist and is not part of any ism or anything absolute. He has lived in many countries, experienced many cultures, and learned about many different beliefs. Things that he hates are slavery, misogyny, lies, and deceptions. And the second debate is, he goes by the name of Kenny Bomar, a 30 years reverse to Islam, and author of upcoming book called Constrict Islam, influencing the past, present, and the future. He's from Houston, Texas, is a compassionate father, a poet, a social activist, and the president of Brozon Sport Islamic Society in Lake Jackson. He is currently pursuing his bachelor, a bachelor degree in Islamic study and jurisprudence at the Mishki University. The topic of the debate will be human development in the Quran. The format of the debate and the rules of the debate are as follows. Each debate will get one or two minutes comment before the open statement. Mr. Star Spenny will go first, then Kenny will go second. 20 minutes open statement for each debate and two minutes reminder to let them know the time is coming in hand. 10 minutes rebuttal for each debate, six questions for each debate with one minute to ask the question, six, uh, three minutes to respond. And 10 minutes closing statement for each debate. The rules of the debate are as follows. Stay on topic. Do not interrupt your opponent. No profanity or personal attack. Show mutual respect and follow the rules as stated. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I will start off with Mr. Star Spanning. He will give one or two minutes to comment, then proceed with his debate. Okay, do, do I unmute myself? Because now I was waiting for you to unmute me. Yeah, so I did. I can, can you I hear? I can do this myself. All right. Um, sorry, I, I just didn't. I suggested embryology versus Quran, and then somehow Kenny changed this um, to make this into human development, what you just said. But now human development um, is more vague and ambiguous. So. Uh, can you just quickly clarify what we're talking about, human development, womb of the mother, or is it like milk teeth, like the deciduous teeth, the second teeth, or puberty development, or spiritual education, menopause? So w which one are we talking about? As far from what I, uh, the information I got from Kenny is human development. He did not specify whether it was embryology. Maybe he can clarify. Let me unmute him real quick. Hello, Kenny. Assalamu alaikum. So, yeah, so for a number of weeks now, uh, the topic has been human development in the Quran. So, uh, so what, whatever his interpretation of human development in the Quran, it's, his, it's up to him to do his own research. But the uh, topic has been set for a number of weeks at this point. It's been advertised for uh, a debate regarding human development. So, uh, that's up to him to determine what he wants to talk about uh, and extract what he needs to from the Quran in order to uh, present his position. So okay. That's all I have. Fair enough. Okay, so uh, you, you, you're not going to specify? He said, um, according to from what well, I'm. To me to decide, I just heard what he said, but I don't quite understand um, because. It was embryology versus Quran, and he changed it to human development. But human development can be a lot of things. So I'm just trying to clarify, are we talking about the human development in the womb of the mother, the, the way that I have understood this? And I just want to clarify this. 
because I just realized that there's a lot of different possibilities of interpreting this. Okay, uh, so that's, uh, unmute my mic again. So, uh, based on the fact that the topic has been development, human development in the Quran for a number of weeks now, um, you, you, you're, you're open to discuss any aspects of human development that you, you see fit. So if you wish to limit your discussion to any particular field, then that's your decision as, as the, um, uh, as the, uh, that's your position. So, um, that was up to you to, you know, find out what topics you wanted to discuss regarding human development in the Quran. If you want to discuss embryology, well, that you have every right to do so. Um, so uh, it's up to you. So I'm going to put my mic on mute. That way I don't interfere with the progression of the debate. Okay. Can you just define embryology then for us so that we know that we're on the same page? I don't think I need to define embryology. Uh, the word embryology doesn't exist in the Quran itself. Um, okay. Human you, development. Can you define human development then? There's many aspects of human development, uh, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. We develop as human beings in a vast number of ways. So this, this, I would rather proceed with the, the, the uh, debate itself instead of getting uh, sidetracked with unnecessary conversation at the beginning of the debate. Uh, uh, it seems to be, um, you know, it's clear that the, the topic of the debate has been for a number of weeks at this point, human development in the Quran. You're welcome to talk about any aspects of human development that you see fit. So, okay, okay. Who do you mean by human development? I'm sorry? I'm sorry. I, I'll, I'll discuss my uh, uh, position on human development during my presentation. I'm not going to discuss it now. Uh, I don't think that's a... Uh, that's okay. Hello. Hello. Uh, Mr. Stas Pemi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm listening, yeah. Okay. So basically he's saying that whatever you understood from human development, you just present your case and we'll let a viewer decide. So I can talk about whatever I want, he talks about whatever he wants, and then how I don't understand. Why no, can no. He, why, why talk can't about you whatever... tell us what we're talking about? Okay, so no. Once again, he's saying, hold on. He's saying that whatever aspect of human development that you understood from the debate, you can talk about that aspect. If you understood the debate to mean human development include embryology, you talk about that. Yeah, but it also means menopause. So am I going to talk about menopause? Well, it's up to you. You're the one, you know, you're debating it. So it's up to you if you want to speak on that aspect. Okay, the thing is that I suggested the topic embryology versus the Quran. Then Kenny changed it to human development in Quran. Okay, okay. so if, if he changes the, from embryology to human development, it's more ambiguous because embryology is not ambiguous, but human development is. And I just gave you a couple of examples. So I just like to know whether we're talking about the human development in the womb of the mother. And I would just like for Kenny to provide us with his understanding if that is what we're talking about and what his understanding is. It, I, I, so I'm a bit at a loss here if he's talking about the development after something, before something. Is it the complete development? Is it only the first 10 weeks? What exactly are we talking about? I think we should clarify the topic. This is normal, okay? You, you say, okay, what, I'm, what we're going to talk about is blah, blah, blah. And I have not heard that yet. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm going to discuss in my presentation is human development in the Quran. I'm not going to go into uh, what I'm going to cover. I'll do that during my presentation. And so to ask me to, to, uh, uh, to try to state my position ahead of time before you've given your opening is that's, uh, that's not the way debate works. So once again, you, okay. you've, you've admitted the fact that you have had... You, 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 the fact it's not spammy. You, you, let, me, let me just interfer, let me, uh, interject for a minute. So whatever you understood to mean human development and whatever pre preparation that you did for the human development or human embryology, as you understood it, you just go ahead and present your case. 
as okay. far from the debate title is concerned, you said, well, I understood this is what he meant when he said human development. So I'm going to present my case and here's it and we let the viewer decide. Does that sound fair enough? Okay. Then I'll just do it like that. I will okay. talk about um, embryology, which is the beginning of the human development and not anything else. Okay, so, just I'll give you two one to two minutes or open statement. Then once you're ready, let me know. I'll start the clock. Okay, then I will just open. I will start now. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, just give me a go. Okay, then... I just want to say thank you that now third time lucky we're we're here and I'd like to explain why I am here and that is mm -hmm. well for two reasons number one is sure to promote my skeptical analysis of the Quran and Islam but number two I'm also here to test my approach my findings to see if they are really as sound as I think they are and to update them when necessary because I'm not perfect and I'm learning all the time. So I'm ready to change my views when I'm shown that they are wrong. Okay, so Kenny and I, we, we were probably very similar when it comes to interaction with family and friends. And, but we differ substantially when our views are challenged. So if I'm proven wrong, I've learned something and I will say, thank you. And when Kenny gets proven wrong, he will more likely say, well, not thank you. And it seems our standards are somewhat different too. So if the Quran claims a perfect God author wrote a perfect book, I expect perfection all the time. Okay. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Okay. When you're ready, let me know. Oh, I thought Kenny was going to do for one minute too. No, no. At least beginning when he started. Ah, he's okay, 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 okay. Then I'm ready. Let's hit it. Okay. Clock start. Clock star. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, what, um, like I said, this is what I expect. And um, if I look at the Quran, then what I'm actually getting is a vague, ambiguous text with dozens of mistakes, inconsistencies, contradictions, and a lot of nonsense. And some Muslim apologists, like Kenny Boma here, ignore this and still claim it's perfect. And that's why now I'm insisting on finding precision. I'm insisting, I want excellence, perfection as is claimed. And this is my motto, facts, not fakes. So if all I find are fakes, I'm going to point this out. Okay, so just to be sure, I don't attack Islam. I definitely don't attack the entirety of all Muslims. I just point out the fakes. So what I do is react to claims, lies, deception in the name of Islam by individual Muslims and Muslim apologists, okay? So I don't attack, but I react to some Muslim apologists, those who lie and deceive, just to get this straight. Because for me, honesty, integrity, and ethics, those are things which are important for me. Now, apologists tell me alcohol, according to the Quran, is prohibited, where the word prohibited does not appear. Yet when the word prohibited does appear, as in prohibited from treating parents well, they will tell me this prohibited is not really prohibited. So what I have learned is that apologists are using words, individual words, to argue their case and turn words into whatever they want them to be. And that's why I'm taking their battle on specific words right back to them. And I'm making the prophecy that Kenny here will start off by mumbling some words in ancient Arabic, a language he has not studied, and that he will use and argue about words in this language he doesn't know. And he's going to do that later on, I guess. Now, a few years ago, I remember there was an entire company in the UK trying to make the Quran look better. And how? Well, by changing words and using modern terminology. It's like, you know, taking a dilapidated, broken car and then fitting a flashy LED reverse light. It doesn't actually change anything. And this is what has happened when Aira got in there with, uh, with sources. And that's why another reason why at the end of the day and after endless discussions with dishonest Muslims, I get anal about the precise and perfect usage of words in this allegedly perfect book, where in spite of this claim of perfection, everything requires context and interpretation by humans. And Kenny follows this. He follows what others tell him blindly. Kenny, you don't read and analyze the Quran, but blindly believe what others tell you the Quran says. 
You don't check but blindly believe what others claim scientists say. Now, I want to destroy your blind faith. You obey and retransmit things. And I, I, do you really believe you understand much of what the Quran says and what Islam is all about? So I'm going to destroy this artificial sense of supremacy and imaginary elevation and put this back on solid ground, reality, using facts. So the questions that I would have to Kenny, and I'm going to ask them again at the end of, of this session, because if I destroy the claim of embryology in the Quran, will that influence your future claims? Will you lie about embryology in the Quran in the future? Are you capable of updating your knowledge? Are you qualified to change, modify, update words? Have you answered on and so forth? So these are the questions I'm going to ask you later in the question session, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you at the end because I'm, I'm actually very curious if there's going to be any change. Now, I'm fully aware that you've been duped, okay? I understand that you were lied to. And since you have no defense mechanism for this, like it's like critical thinking or logic, so you obediently distributed this. And in, in a role, well, I'm not going to... And you do this with conviction. Now, I schooled you regarding several topics in the Quran and in science. So is that going to have any impact? Well, let's find out. Now, today I'm addressing two claims by asking two simple questions. Is there anything or is there anything like embryology in the Quran? And number two, is what the Quran tells us factually correct or is it wrong? A mistake. Okay, I will start on number one by doing the following. I will look at reality using a textbook. I will put the Quran next to it and compare the two books side by side, and then I will formulate a conclusion. So I will focus on the literal Quran only, without any exegesis, and I will also avoid the Sunnah, the secondary text, as this, would, this makes it more crazy. So let's start with the facts, the reality. Since I'm neither a biologist, nor an anatomist, nor anything, I'm not an embryologist, okay? I need to rely on what scholars, authorities, but experts have researched and studied. So if I go and take a look at what there is available to me, there are dozens of books on embryology. So if I choose any one of these, and, I, and I've looked at a couple of these, okay, they all describe what happens when a human being is created in the womb of their mother, reflecting facts, not faith. Remember, facts, not fakes. And this is what I see here. Now, I can verify the facts because the authors provide their data, their observations. And this enables me to not only verify the descriptions, but more importantly, provide the means to potentially falsify and to make predictions. And this then provides the basis for the belief that this is likely true, an accurate and reliable representation of reality, something I can trust. Okay, now if I take any one of these books, like this one here, The Developing Human, and this exists in, I think, 10 um, editions so far with the uh, three authors, with Dr. Keith Moore, Dr. Perso, and Dr. Tokia. So these three have written a number of books. Okay, so it's not only this one. They've, they've, they've also written... Um, before we are born. Um, there, there's a whole lot of books, but the most important one and the most successful one is definitely The Developing Human. So if I go and take um, this book, which is the most successful one, does or do all these books that this trio has written, do they contain anything on the Quran? Do they mention anything about the book that we are talking about today? Yes, they do, because what they are saying is there are legends and myths, and they are comparing it to the Indians, they are comparing it to the Babylonians, Sumerians, to the Egyptians, and to the Greeks. And this is what they say. Now, unfortunately, what I have found is that Dr. Moore in his book also states that the resulting organism settles in the womb like a seed six days after its beginning. The Quran does not say this. So it looks like Dr. Moore has never read the Quran, or it doesn't look like he at least knows what it says. So, hmm, 
it looks like he's not an expert in Islamic human development and should have stayed where he knows his stuff in human anatomy. Now, the book, The Developing Human, has been published for decades, okay, in all 10 editions, except one single edition, the third edition, okay, say the same thing about basics, as do all books on embryology do for that matter. And it doesn't matter which, which book I go, we, we, we always find the same elements, we always find, except the third edition, of course, and Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this. It's not for sale, and the, the, the red edition, okay? It's only available in Muslim-majority countries, and even I was not able to find it, okay? It was not written by the usual team, but it's merely the second edition with a, what a Muslim apologist called Zindani. Um, well, he deleted all the scientifically accurate parts in the beginning and replaced them with sentences from the Quran and the Sunnah, and that's what the publishers put on the cover. Okay, so all other books on embryology, and not only by Dr. Moore, roughly say the same thing about embryology in the beginning. So it doesn't matter which um, book we read, which uh, edition, which are, it's always the same thing. So from this, from this we can see that in order to have embryology, you always need four elements. You need the two gametes, which is one cell produced by a female and a second cell produced by a male. One produced outside the body, the other inside the body. Very different cells. Now the Quran mentions neither of these. The male cells are produced and released in the millions and the female cell only exists one at a time. Does the Quran mention this? No. Okay, if we now go and we, we go further down with this, we see that these very different cells, where the male one is tiny and is mobile, the female is huge and immobile, they're haploids, in other words, with half a set of the required chromosomes. The Quran mentions none of this. And then comes the most important part of the process that both these cells are fusing so that we get a single resulting cell, a zygote, with a complete set of 46 chromosomes and usually a determined gender right from the beginning. The Quran does not mention any of this. So in the real world, we have a sperm, ovum, a process, and the resulting beginning of a human being as a multicellular organism, the zygote. If you remove any one of these four elements, there is no such thing as embryology. There is no such thing as a developing human. Now the Quran mentions none of them, even though this is the most essential part and the foundation of human existence. Remove any one of these four elements and there is no human being. That's the way that it is. It's the brute, for, it's just, you can't change this. Now, we all appreciate that the Quran is not a biology textbook, okay? So it does not reproduce or substitute a 500 or 600 page textbook like this one by Dr. Moore. But to be remarkable, not even expecting or demanding perfection here, it should at least fulfill two things. It should provide the basics and it should be correct in what is being presented. Does the Quran mention the development of a human being? No. Does it mention the development of limbs, stomach, intestines, liver, kidney, spleen, brain, eyes, and it? No. So by now we understand that the Quran does not contain anything even remotely resembling human development. It does not contain anything about the natural processes. It is the creation of a human being. It is creationism. To call this embryology would not only be a huge exaggeration, but factually wrong. So there is no embryology in the Quran, not even the basics. But then, hmm, what does the Quran mention? So let me move to part two. Let me take the Quran seriously for a moment and check, is what the Quran tells us factually correct or is it wrong? Is what it does say, is this in line with what we know about embryology today? So it's, it's very easy to check this. Okay, so what we have, if we go and read the Quran, we see a creator God and very fond of writing books. So is there anything regarding embryology the way that we've just seen it? No. 
All we get is a supernatural imaginary creator entity doing magic. And it doesn't help if you have abracadabralaka or something. Individual words do not help here. Now, if we look at the book, then there's a lot of contradictions. And okay, let me just show you one. Okay, so in the beginning, what, what is said in the Quran, all human beings are made from water. So we made every living thing out of water. Allah created every moving creature from water and he who created man from water. That's what the Quran claims. Now, what exactly can you make from water? Well, water. Does Dr. Moore's book mention water? No. I wonder why. Well, because the human body is not made from water. It contains water, just like an aircraft contains a lot of air, but is not made from out of air. So you can add pressure, you get a fountain, you add height, you get a waterfall, you add whiskey, you get taste. What do you need to add to get humans? And it does not say humans are made up of cells which contain water in varying amounts. It does not say life originates in water. Both these things claimed by somebody like Dr. Bouquet. And the word ma is water in Arabic. If this is claimed to be also synonymous with seminal fluid, it is equally wrong, as it is not the liquid that counts, but like we saw, two cells, two very different cells that merge. Water, yeah, it's necessary, but not as the origin of human being. Now, if I go and I look what older civilizations have said, then funny enough, I see exactly this that life comes from water, that human beings are made from water. But then, unfortunately, in the Quran, this creator changes his mind and suddenly thinks we are from a fluid which is worthless, from clay, from, mus from, from mud, from dust, from all sorts of things. So we have no idea what we humans are created from when reading the Quran. But does it mention the most important ingredient, the element all life on this planet is based on? Carbon? No, carbon is not mentioned anywhere in the entire Quran. Okay, is the Quran correct in what it claims? No. Then finally, let's turn to the creation process. What is mentioned in the Quran is creationism. And there's, that's, that's it, there is nothing more. A creator with in, with, with bare hands, creates humans individually, knowing full well what will happen in the future. So we are handmade, handcrafted individually from mud or similar stuff, created with advanced knowledge what they would turn out as by an all-knowing, all-powerful, mythical, supernatural creator being, created with a single purpose, to worship this incompetent creator because 80% of these handcrafted humans don't worship this creator. So it fails 80% of the time. But like everything in the Quran, nothing really turns out to be true when an attempt is made to verify the claims in the Quran. So here we get several conflicting claims, allegedly describing what happens. Now, if we take just the, the longer ones, the, the more detailed ones, well, in chapter 23, it says, we have created man from an extract of clay. And in chapter 40, it says, he is the one who created you from dust. Okay. Then from a drop of semen. A drop of semen. What on earth is a drop of semen? Now, semen is liquid. But with semen, you cannot fertilize an egg, the female egg. So human development does not start with semen. And it doesn't start from a clot. Then we made, back going back to chapter 23, then we made him a drop in a firm resting place. That's nonsense. It's not a drop and it's not a firm and it's not a resting place. And then in sentence 14, we turned the sperm drop into a clot. Well, really? Then we turned the clot into a small lump of flesh. Then we turned the small lump of flesh into bones and we closed the bones of flesh. After we, okay. Does any of this make sense? No. This is not what we find in reality. So if we, if, if, I mean, this God is all-knowing, all-powerful. The author of the Quran does not know what materials are used to handcraft human beings, well, and the jinn, of course, and what process is being used, and writes total gibberish instead. 
Does anything in the Quran even remotely resemble anything in Dr. Moore's book? No, nothing at all. Sorry. So is there anything we read correct here? No. Two minutes left. Everything you check up on turns out to be wrong. So in their despair, Muslim apologists came up with this reallocation of modern words. But does anything in the Quran even remotely resemble anything in Dr. Moore's book? No, nothing at all. Sorry. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. Now we'll pass on to Brother Kenning. He will take over and present his case. Kenny? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi I'd like to thank uh, Abu for moderating this debate and uh, thank my opponent for having the courage to step into this venue. And I would like to start by saying, La ilaha illallah wa adhu la sharikala wa shadow na Muhammad an abduhu wa razulu wa bear witness there's no God other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his final servant in the seal of our prophets. Praise be to Allah. We seek his help and his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own souls and from my own bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah deems is led astray, no one can guide. Verily, Allah commands us to act with justice and to treat others with kindness that we would treat our own families with. And he forbids evils which pertain to ourselves and evils which may affect others. And he prohibits revolts against lawful authority. Allah warns us about being unmindful. So remember Allah, and he too, he too will remember you calling him, and he will indeed respond to your call. For surely the divine remembrance of Allah is the highest virtues. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the Prophet Muhammad, his household, his companions, and may he bless each and every one of us, have mercy, and have mercy on each and every one of us on the day of judgment. Praise be to Allah. So, uh, once again, I'd like to thank everyone for being here, and um, I'm ready to proceed whenever you are ready. Let me just get a quick drink, and inshallah, we'll, we, will, we shall proceed. Alhamdulillah. Just let me know when you're ready. I'll start the clock. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. During my presentation, I'm going to be focused on a number of different aspects of development in the human being. Um, the placement of, and growth within the womb, the development in adolescence, development of humans as humans, uh, as adults, uh, into our old age, and into our eventual de death. <clears throat> but I'm not going to limit my argument to just the development in the womb itself, because to do so would be to imply that the so-called scientific verses sum up what is intended from our God, our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I, do, I don't use the, the expression so-called scientific miracles to suggest that Allah hasn't drawn our attention to our physical development and signs within science. But my synopsis and my argument is that those very verses that are labeled as scientific and debated on scientific terms are far more than simply signs and science that address our physical development and in all instances, instances draw our attention to human development in all aspects of mankind, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, as well as physically. Consistently throughout the Quran, Allah draws mankind's attention to us and calls us to, to ponder, to think and to reflect on from what man was created, drawing attention to a unique relationship between our God, our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the human being, Allah proclaiming himself as the instructor and the human being as his peoples. So the word for the human being in Arabic means is, is ansan, which comes from the root word nisan, which means to forget. So as we develop through our lives and we get, become preoccupied with what the world offers, we tend to forget what we came from. Nothing more than a single drop of sperm, one single drop of sperm out of millions. So the Quran calls us to that reminder and its purpose is to remind people and for some to wake those people up. So in Surah, the 45th Surah of the Quran, verse 24, it says, It says, and they say, what is it, what is there about our life in this, but what is it but our life in this world? Alhamdulillah. We shall die and we shall live and nothing but time can destroy us. But of that, they have no true knowledge. They are merely making conjecture. In Surah al fasalat the 53rd verse, it says, We shall show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. But is it not sufficient?
This should concern me, your Lord, that he is over all things a witness. So it becomes obvious by the use of the word until in Surah Al-Fasalat that there's going to be a period of time for growth and development involved in the process of really revealing the truth to mankind. So development is a process similar to the progression of the story when it's being narrated, synonyms being evolution, growth, maturation, expansion, enlargement, spread, and progress. But my question is today, what does the human develop into while going throughout the course of our lives, while living our lives? In Surah Al-Arum, the 54th verse, it says, Allah is he who created you in a state of weakness, then appointed you strength after weakness, then after strength appointed you weakness and gray hair. He creates what he wills, and it is he who is the all-knowing and the all-powerful. Drawing our attention to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us in a state of weakness where in the womb itself we are relying upon uh, extracting nutrients from the mother, then we begin to develop in our lives and we become strong in our adulthood. And then we return back to the weakness where we see gray hair develop and we become weakened. And it is a reminder to us that death is, is, is soon coming. In Surah Al-Isra, it says, and say, truth is now arriving, falsehood must perish, for falsehood is bound to perish. We send down, down to you stage by stage in the Quran that which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe. Once again, a healing and a mercy to those who believe, but to the unjust, it causes nothing but loss after loss. Yet when we, when we bestow our favors on men, he turns away and becomes remote on his side instead of coming to us. And when evil seizes him, he gives himself up to despair. But say, Ikara, everyone acts according to his own disposition, but your Lord knows best who it is that is best guided on the way. So in these verses, we're seeing once again, we see two types of development. Uh, that Allah is revealing in the stage by stage uh, revelation to mankind. We see the, the healing and a mercy to those who believe, addressing emotional and mental issues that affect the human physically as well. And for those dis who disbelieve, uh, they still continue to see, receive blessings in stages, but they get caught up in them and, and they forget that our, and, and they begin to reject our Creator, saying that He doesn't exist while they see themselves as self sufficient. But when hardships come, the human inclination by the de divine decree causes them to want to cry out to something, something greater than, them, than themselves in desperation. So once again, what does the human develop into and while learning throughout the course of our lives? Paths have been made distinct and clear. In Surah Al-Imran, verse one seven, verses 1 through 7, it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alif lam mim, Allah, there's no God but He, the living, the self-subsisting, the eternal. It is he who sent down to you step by step in truth the book confirming confirming what came before it. And he sent down the Torah to Moses and the, in the gospel of the Injil to Jesus. Before this is a guide to mankind. And he sent down the criterion, this Quran, which is a judgment between what's right and wrong. Then those who reject faith in the signs of Allah will suffer the severest chastisement and Allah is exalted in might and the Lord of retribution. From Allah, verily, nothing is hidden on the earth or in the heavens, and it is he who shapes you in the wombs as he pleases. There's no God but he, the exalted in might and wise. He it is who sent down to thee the book in, in it are verses that are basic and fundamental and of, of established meaning. They are the foundation of the book. And there are other books that are more allegorical and not of well-established meaning, but those in whose hearts is perversity follow that part which is allegorical and not of well-established meaning, seeking discord and searching for its interpretation. But no one knows the true meanings except for Allah. And those who are firmly grounded in knowledge say, we believe in it, the whole of it is from our Lord, and none will grasp the message except for men of understanding. I want to stress the fact that none will grasp that knowledge except for men of understanding, men who open themselves up to the guidance. So again, we see verses in the Quran where Allah draws attention to a step-by-step -step progression in the development of the human by mentioning the Torah of Moses, alayhi salat wa salam, and the Injil of Isa, or Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salat wa salam, peace and blessings be upon both of the prophets, and the new, in the, their revelations in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Then Allah describes his final testament to mankind, as being the Quran, which is al faqan the criterion between what's right and wrong. So because the human is stubborn, we see as in the example of the, uh, in the Old Testament, the ancient children of Israel wandering around for 40 years in the desert while rejecting the prophet Musa, alayhi salat wa salam, Moses of the Old Testament. Then we see Isa, once again, the son of Mary, peace and blessed be upon him, coming to guide mankind in the New Testament, only to be mocked and ridiculed as the same Jewish ancestors implore 
uh, tried to implore the Romans to, 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 to kill Jesus, not long after beheading another prophet of Allah, the prophet Yahya or John the Baptist, peace and blessings be upon him. So in the Quran it says, but those whose in hearts once again is perversity, follow that part thereof that is not well established in meaning, seeking discord and searching for its interpretation. But once again, no one knows its true meanings except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our God, our creator, alhamdulillah. So in, in the examples of Jesus and the children, I mean, uh, Moses and the children of Israel and the people that, uh, that Jesus was ridiculed and mocked by, we see two paths being take, taken. So once again, it calls to mind, what does the human develop into during the course of our lives? Because the human is stumbled, Allah has sent his final message to mankind through the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, in order to guide those who have rejected the previous messengers and prophets, peace, be, peace and blessings be upon them all. So this is a mercy from Allah, our God, our creator, before the day of judgment. Because here we are in 2018 and we still see this continual rejection on a larger scale than ever with the development of the internet and the social media and the spreading of information as a whole, which in itself demonstrates human development in regards to human technology, ranging from uh, the state of going from just merely talking to writing on stones and wood and parchments to communicating in real time via smartphones and on venues such as uh, Google Hangouts that we're talking right now. So all of this allows our antagonists, the antagonists and the disbelievers, to attempt to discredit the Prophet Muhammad and our creator like never before in the media and on internet radio shows and on talk shows and on television and the movies and, and so forth. So once again, it draws our attention to the question, what does the human being develop into during the course of one's lifetime? Let's talk about the example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, as being a guidance to mankind. We see the development of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, himself going from an orphan to being a young man who was very well respected in his community, known as Al Alamin, the truthful one, who uh, then began to work for his eventual wife, Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her in her caravan business, to becoming a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the age of 40, and then becoming a man that functioned not only as a religious leader, but as a politician and even a military leader, because he was forced to defend himself and the Muslim community, community against slaughter and oppression, which caused a man by the name of Michael H. Hart in ranking of the 100 most influ influential persons in history to rank the Prophet Muhammad number one, where he ranked Jesus, peace of blessed be upon him, the one he, created, he, who he worshiped as a Christian, he ranked him number three. And he says, and I quote, my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and it may question it may be questioned by others. But he was not only a man in history, who, but he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and uh, secular levels. And he goes on to say, and I quote, of humble origins, Muhammad founded and promulgated one of the world's greatest religions and became an immensely effective political leader. And today, 13 centuries after his death, his influence is, is still powerful and pervasive, end of quote. So once again, we see the example and the development of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala versus those who antagonize and try to persecute and try to ridicule even to this day. In Surah al alaq let's talk about development in the womb. In, in Surah al alaq the 96th uh, Surah of the Quran, verses one through eight, it says, uh, read and proclaim in the name of your Lord who created, who created man from a cleaning substance. Proclaim for your Lord is most gracious, who taught man by the pen. He taught man what he did not know. No, but man transgresses all bounds and he sees himself as self sufficient. But truly to your Lord will be the return of you all. Let's talk about the word ikra because it has dual meanings, uh, multiple meanings in the Arabic language. Ikra in the Arabic language means to read, recite, rehearse, or proclaim aloud. And be, that being the object of our God or Creator's message to mankind. So this draws our attention to man being able to learn without being able to, to write in the case of the Prophet Muhammad. But he was, he was touched and he was led spiritually as well as mentally which is other aspects of our human development. It wasn't just the physical aspect of being able to read. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace and be upon him, went from one who was oppressed and ridiculed to one that has in today 1.6 to 1.8 billion Muslims in the day, uh, living today. And he was sent as a mercy to all of mankind who was erring before, during, and after his death. May Allah have mercy on us. So the vast majorities of the people in the world today will deny that we have a creator and choose to follow their own desires and inclinations uh, instead of submitting humbly like a believer. So once again, it draws our attention to what does the human develop 
into during the course of one's lifetime. So Allah mentions himself in the Quran as being the Lord and the cherisher, pointing out that he provides even for those who reject his existence and, and to establish a direct nexus between him as the source of the message and to humankind in the receivers of the message. So this message isn't just merely an abstract proposition of philosophy, but it's a direct concrete message to guide mankind and mold mankind in all aspects of our lives, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. But Allah is not going to accept you, uh, force you to accept anything. Uh, you have a, a clear path. You have a choice to, to go the straight path or you can go another route. And Surah Al-Baqarah says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. Whoever rejects evil and believes in Allah has grasped a trustworthy handhold that will never break. And Allah hears and knows all things. So Allah developed the Prophet Muhammad once again by example throughout the course of his, of his life and gave him the ability to, to cope and deal with going from an orphan to the death of his children, all of his children, to the death of his wife, Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, to enduring great persecution that was headed his way. And it's a persecution once again, which has continued to develop as hatred has been spread even to his followers. And we see this each and every day in our world today. So once again, what does the human develop into? One path is a straight path and the other path is filled with many options that lead people to accept things that are not only detrimental to self, but detrimental to, to society as a whole, as one group is, is routinely singled out time and time again and subjected to oppression on various levels by others who seem to choose hatred and division instead, instead of acceptance and respect for all people. So one group, by example, uh, has no issue with promiscuity or alcohol, by example, um, whereas the, the believers will practice modesty and abstinence, or as directed by our creator through the prophets, peace and blessing be upon them. And one group sees themselves as self-sufficient, while the other group humbly submits, saying, without Allah, I'm nothing. Without Allah, I'm no one, which is a quote from my book, Consider Islam, because we believe in Islam as Muslims. We believe in the qadr of Allah, with the decrees of Allah, and the fact that he set things in motion by his, by his guidance, by his um, cause laws of cause and effect. So once again, what does the human develop into? We have one path to take and we have another. So are those, let's talk about those who claim that there's no creator and claim that he doesn't exist. Are they truly self-sufficient? They don't think they, they're in need of a God or creator? Are they truly self-sufficient or do we see a continuous development even from the moment of conception? Allah says in the Quran, we created man from a clean substance, alaka. Arabic words, let's talk about the word alaka for a second. The Arabic words are generally based on a root word, which uses consonants to define underlying meanings, such you know, with vowel, various vowels, prefixes, and suffixes, which are used uh, with the root letters to create the desired meaning or the inflection. So in the re regards to the word alaka, it means to clean, to stick, to adhere, to suspend, to catch, get caught, affix, or conjoin. It could be... Um, it could also mean a leech-like formation that extracts nutrients from the blood of another creature. So by employing uh, various grammatical manipulations of the, of the root word, you come up with the many derivatives, and each of which is closely associated with the concept of clinging or suspending. So from the time that the embryo begins to develop in the human, it's suspended in time in the womb. And this is what Allah is drawing our attention to. And there's many things he's drawing our attention to. So he's drawing it's suspended in the womb and Allah's drawing our attention to that and it's it's uh not being self-sufficient because it's continually drawing nutrients from the mother and then the child is born and continues to develop and continues to gain cognitive uh, capacity and and learns from uh their parents and and the other people in society but how the human is developed is determined by the nature of those that is uh providing the influence in society so by example, uh, a racist, you know, parents are generally going to raise their, their children to be racist or people with no God consciousness are going to raise their children not to believe that we have a creator. But versus those who submit themselves to the belief that we do have a creator uh, that we're going to one day return to, they're going to lead their children to pray and to have self-respect and respect for others in society. So regardless of how the human develops, the human is continuously being molded and shaped by acquired knowledge and influences, just as the embryo develops uh, by extracting nutrients from the mother in the womb. We're continually learning and continually extracting things from society and nature itself. So this brings our attention to the word derivation. Uh, which is obtaining or developing of something from a, a source of origin, the derivation of scientific laws of observation, uh, observation by example. So the specific derivation of the word alaka has a dual meaning once again, depending on the context, it can either mean a, a clump of blood or a leech. So example, in the Ang Arabic English dictionary, 
uh, Dictionary of Modern Written Arabic by J. Milton Cohen on page 64. Uh, the word alaka is defined as a medicinal leech, a leech, a blood, uh, or blood clot. So in summary, we can say that we have three different things that the alaka can mean, uh, one of which is general root meaning and the others which are more specific deriv derivatives. So the blood clot, once again, from the moment of inception, the human begins to develop and begins to draw nutrients from the mother in the womb, and we begin to grow after we're birthed, and we grow, and we continue to develop throughout the course of our lives, continuing to do the same thing. We're never self-sufficient. We're always relying upon uh, uh, what has been created in, uh, in, in nature and so forth. And we're suspended. The word suspended no, also no. applies. The word suspended also applies because it, during the course of the time in the womb, we're in there for a sus uh, suspended period of time. We develop in the womb and then we give birth and the same process takes place as we live our lives here on the earth. And like the leech, we're continually extracting once again from uh, things in nature. Let's talk about the word nutfa just for a moment because Allah says from nutfa, which is a, a, the male and the female liquids, he created him and then set him in due proportion. Allah's drawing our attention to the fact that by his decrees and by his uh, divine power. He's created us in the womb and it requires the chromosomes of 23 chromosomes from the male uh, semen and 23 chromosomes from the ovum, which creates the 46 chromosomes that my opponent mentioned earlier, arranged in 23 pairs. Allah says in, the, in Surah Al-Anaba, have we not created you in pairs? Drawing our attention to the fact that indeed Allah has placed us in the womb by his decree. He draws attention to the fact that he has um, uh, created us in pairs, and he demonstrates that by uh, the reflecting on the fact that there are 23 chromosomes required in the male semen and the 23 chromosomes of the, the ovum, and that creates the human being, and we begin to develop, and we continue to develop until the day that we pass away. So I, I, I finished my opening statement by saying, La ilaha illallah, wa tu la sharik la wa shadow la muhammadan, abduhu wa razulu, praise be to Allah, our Lord, our God, our creator. Without him, I am nothing. Without him, I am no one. Alhamdulillah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was the first round, the opening statement for Start Spamming. And then, um, Brother Kenny, now we'll go to the rebuttal, 10 minutes for each debater. Now, um, Start Spamming will take over. Hello? Hello? Okay. Can you hear? Yep. Am I going through now? Yeah. Okay, Let me great. know when you're ready so I can start the time. Okay. Well, then let's let's go for it because I, I don't know what to do with this. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Because yesterday was Friday, and yesterday was the Friday sermon, and I, I don't know what just happened. I mean, I, I understand now the change of title. I mean, we agreed on embryology in the Quran, and Kenny changed that and now delivered a Friday sermon on, on the Quran and Islam, but not on embryology. And everything, as soon as he did bring some facts, I already showed that those are wrong. So I don't really understand what this was about. There is no drop of sperm. There is no such thing as a drop of sperm. So this is factually incorrect. So there, there is no development here, no facts, nothing we can verify. This was just plain preaching. I don't understand some words. What is self-sufficient? I don't understand what these words are. And I don't understand what Muhammad has to do with anything. And there is no such thing as a clinging substance. Human beings are not created from a clinging substance. There is no such thing as a la carte. It, I said this is stupid to bring up individual words because they will not work. And then to bring up cling and stick and whatever, da, 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 I, I, I don't understand it. How, I, I don't know what to do with this because there is nothing, you can't say that, in the, the process of a human being developing in the womb, 
is a sentence where the words have three different possibilities. What is it? I don't, un I don't understand what these processes are supposed to be if I show these processes. If, and, and one of them is an alaka. You, you can't say that, that it has three different meanings and we can just pick and choose which we want today. It doesn't work. So the, the, the guy who brought up an embryo is, is a total clot because an embryo simply does not cling and the embryo is the furthest away from a leech. A, an embryo doesn't have a hundred teeth like a leech. An embryo does not use blood as nourishment. It uses it as a transport medium. A, a, an embryo does not increase its size five, six, eight times while it is feeding on blood. There is nothing that an embryo and a leech have in common. Absolutely nothing. So this constant drawing our attention to, drawing our attention to what? To 23 chromosomes? Because we know today it's 23 chromosomes. Does the Quran say 23 chromosomes? No. And everything is created in pairs is factually incorrect. Now, let me, let me show you something, okay? Muslim apologists came up with this reallocation of words in, in the old text because uh, we had, um, when was it, um, Zindani 40 years ago, then Zaki and I came up with this 20 years ago, then Tzotzis came up with this 10 years ago. And this, this was the same old thing, always going about nutfa, which is a liquid, and then alaka, which is something that is clinging, or blood or something, then it's mugda, and then we have the bones. This is wrong. And then what happened? The final refutation, the ultimate refutation, came in the, ha the hands of uh, Captain Disguise and Martin Taverell. So they, on, on like 150 pages, they provided the ultimate, the definitive refutation, debunking all the claims by analyzing not just the primary and secondary texts and the exegesis, but also the Islamic commentaries by scholars and their understanding in the early stages of Islam and presenting what really happens in the womb. And this stopped and then killed off all claims regarding embryology in the Quran. And the company, Aira, at the stage, retracted the claims and urged Muslims not to search for anything scientific in the Quran. And Kenny now is doing exactly that. There is nothing of scientific interest in the Quran. And what there is, is wrong. I've just demonstrated that. And now he is like, I don't know, pretending like none of this happened and he's rehashing all the lies and presenting the deceit all over again, hoping that gullible Muslims will not check and not come across the refutations. I, I don't really understand what this whole thing was about. There were, there were no facts, there were no you know, things that, that I could in, in any way um, verify or falsify or anything. Let me just give you one quick example. In the Quran, it says that, um, let me just go here. Um, we turned the small lump of flesh into bones. Then we clothed the bones with flesh. All right, here in sentence 14. And it's, it's there, it's in the Quran. So we turned the small lump of flesh into bones. Then we clothed the bones with flesh. So the bones must have been there and then came the flesh. Okay, well, whatever. Now, if we look at reality, if we look at Dr. Moore's book, we will see that this is definitely not true because what happens is you have a limb bud forming, which means cartilage and the flesh and everything together at the same time simultaneously. But then, and this is the interesting part, to get to the digits, the flesh around the bones dies. Okay? So this is known as necrosis or cell death. So the flesh between the cartilage dies to form individual fingers. So it's not a case of creating bones and covering the bones with flesh, but flesh dying around the bones. So this is the exact opposite, what happens in reality when compared to the Quran. So I don't understand what we're talking about. And here we have people who say exactly this, where Dr. Sadler says there is no time when calcified bones have been formed and then the muscles are placed around them. So this is absolute nonsense but let me ask you if i would say we took two tiny halves one from the man one from the woman and we merged them into a single seed implanted in the woman's belly and from this a new human being will arise would this be more accurate 
But what we have at the moment, there is nothing in the Quran that one might label embryology. It's pure creationism. And that's why Kenny went and said, well, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about the development of the human. And then giving us rambling on about Muhammad and blah, 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 giving us total nonsense. So anything that we have in the Quran, that as soon as we try and, and we try and verify it, it turns out to be wrong. And this goes for embryology as well. So over the years, I've shown again and again that it's impossible for the Quran to have been written by anyone except ignorant, uneducated humans with the knowledge level of a 7th century camel herder. I've shown mistake after mistake in the Quran, inconsistencies, contradictions, and plain nonsense. Come on. I mean, that's all I'm doing. I'm not attacking anyone. I'm just looking at the claims. So maybe there is some moving poetry in there, in the Quran, okay, which I can't fathom because I was not created with the knowledge of the language used to convey the commands and wishes of that creator. How stupid is that? And why do I even bother? Because I'm scared, I'm frightened, I'm petrified by the idea of living according to Sharia. Now, Islam takes over your time, your thinking, judgment, morality, and there is nothing factually correct in the Quran. But I need to accept the morality of the 7th century based on what it says in this old book, a book full of mistakes, inconsistencies, contradictions, and plain nonsense, a book most Muslims believe to be perfect like their creator God. Two minutes left. I have, thank you. I have challenged people for years to show me something, anything in the Quran that is verifiably true. So far, no takers. If I ask Kenny, what does chapter two, sentence number one mean? He will tell me he does not know. Nobody knows. Allah knows best. So he is believing a book to be perfect that he doesn't even understand. He doesn't know what it says. And yet he comes to me and says, well, it's all about the development. So I'm taking one aspect of the development, which is the embryology, and I show it is wrong. And then by showing how chaotic this universe actually is and how badly the Quran is actually written, I'm trying to get people to think, to think more logically and more rationally about these topics, to get through this dense fog, this dense web of lies, deceit, and propaganda. So... I would feel a lot better if everybody would join me in this because we could sure use some help in tackling the real problems this planet is facing. Kenny being one of them. And it's a pity that he did not go and actually go and give me any kind of fact from out of the Quran regarding embryology the way that he understands it. But just copying what was already refuted and the rest of the time simply waffling about, I don't know, the, the spiritual development and drawing our attention to things, and the rest was wrong. Thank you. Um, Muhammad Ali, you are muted. Hello. Assalamualaikum. Yes. Yeah. So it's going to be ten. Kenny's turn. He's going to get ten minute rebuttal. Let me know when you're ready. Then I set the clock. Inshallah. Okay, I'm ready, brother. Ready? All right, let's go. Okay, in my rebuttal, I'm going to draw attention initially to the fact that it has said that the human body uh, was not constituted with water. And in fact, if you go to the website, uh, www.thought.com, you'll see an article written by Dr. Anne-Marie uh, Helmenstein, and she lists that the, the fact that the human body is comprised of 50 to 75 percent water, the adult uh, consisting of 50 to 65 percent water, infants being 75 to 75, uh, excuse me, 75 to 78 percent water. Uh, so we indeed are created from water, and Allah does reveal that in the Quran. That is a fact that can be easily verified, and I'm surprised that my opponent does not know that we all are made of water, uh, mostly water. Alhamdulillah, the Quran is correct on that point. 
Uh, he claims that it is not. So uh, in regards to everything being created in pairs, I want to draw attention to simply oxygen. Well, let's talk about water. Let's just talk about water. Uh, H2O, it's comprised of hydrogen and oxygen. It requires two elements. That's just an example of the fact that you, in order to try to find, you, you won't find anything that's ever been created on this earth had to uh, come about because of uh, the combination of, of two, at least two elements, at least two elements, uh, praise be to Allah, two domineering elements, as a matter of fact. So, uh, once again, he's incorrect in his statements. So, let's, let's talk about the word nutfah from a, a scientist's uh, perspective. The word nutfah, described in Lane's lexicon, is a singular entity, which is a part of a bigger group of its kind. It's a single sperm from a collection of billions of sperm. This is what the word nutfah means. A single sperm from a collection of billions of sperm. One female egg uh, from a group. Or, or it could mean one female egg from a group of many in the ovaries. So in the Hadith, you'll notice that uh, uh, nutfah is described as being a combination of the male and female. The Quran mentions nutfah as, as a mingled substance. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, but in 2010, embryologists Beverly Kramer and John Allen, uh, in a book titled The Fundamentals of Human Embryology, say that the human in the human individual, this is a quote, the human individual arises from the conjugation of two minute structures called, called cells, one from the mother and one from the father. These are called the gametes, and together these gametes form a single cell called a zygote, which form the embryo and surrounding membranes grow. And the Quran mentions uh, Karadin Makin in a place of security, describing the Nutfa as being placed in a place of, of protection. But before I talk about that, I want to draw attention to the fact that in, the, in those, that statement by uh, Beverly Kramer and John Allen, the, the embryologist, they do draw attention to the fact that uh, in order for uh, the embryo, embryo, embryo to, to begin to develop and grow, that it does require those 23 chromosomes that, uh, that are found in the single drop, once again, the single drop of semen, one out of billions uh, that create mankind from the male and 23 chromosomes from the ovum, which I uh, mentioned in my opening statement. So once again, uh, he is incorrect in his statements claiming that the Quran makes a mistake there. So let's talk about uh, uh, the, being placed in a place of settlement, Qarar. It means that, uh, to make sedentary uh, or to be established, to assign, to schedule, to determine, to stipulate. If you remember in my opening statement, I was discussing the fact that we are there for a period of time as we develop in the womb. And this is representing the Quran. Allah's not drawing our attention to scientific details, but but uh, but the basics. My opponent mentioned that the Quran doesn't even mention the basics, but yet then he went uh, proceeded to uh, uh, say uh, mention the fact that it did indeed mention the basics, and that's all it's meant to to uh, to represent these verses. Uh, he mentioned that it doesn't tell the development of the spleen and the liver and the kidneys and so forth. But the book, the Quran, is not a, a book of science. It's not a science book. It's not meant for that. It's to draw our attention to the fact that we all come from a single substance. We all come from a single drop of sperm and the combination of the sperm and the ovum from our mother. And drawing attention to the fact that um, we all come from the same source. We're all going to eventually die. Elvis Presley's dead. Michael Jackson is dead. All the people that we know throughout our lifetime, they pass away. Allah is drawing our attention to the fact that we too are going to grow old, we're going to die one day, and it draws attention to the fact that we're all created from the same substance because we have people in society that oppress others through, through prejudice and through hatred and ill, you know, hate-filled words. My opponent has attacked me personally through the course of his, his, uh, his presentation, and I'm not going to do that. Praise be to Allah. Uh, Thank him for proving that Islam is the answer. I have no interest in, in, in belittling this brother in any form or fashion. My intent is to engage him in a scholarly debate and talk about the issues. And what he sees as verses of the Quran that are specifically supposed to be scientific, I, as a Muslim, see these verses as being far more than that, which is why I said it, that I'm not going to talk about merely embryology. The word embryology is not mentioned in the Quran, and I'm not going to limit the words of my God, my creator, to just scientific terms, 
because uh, Allah tells us in the Quran, we cannot add to him and we cannot take away from him in any way. In Surah Al-Imran, it says, he it is who revealed the truth of the scripture, wherein there are clear revelations. They are the substance of the book. The verses that are real clear and precise, um, uh, Allah is one and he's, there's no God but he. Okay, those are clear and precise verses. It says they, they are the, the foundation of the book and others are more allegorical. He mentioned this fact. And he, he mentioned, matter of fact, what, is, what was his quote? His, he said uh, that they were allegorical. Uh, uh, he says they were ambiguous, but full of mistakes. Well, how can something be ambiguous, which is, uh, hasn't been determined? The facts of an ambiguous statement have not been set in stone. So how can something that's ambiguous be full of mistakes? These verses right here in the Quran, Surah Al-Imran, I'm going to read it again. It says, he it is who revealed unto thee the truth of the scripture, wherein there are clear revelations in the Quran. They are the substance of the book. They are, and others are, which are allegorical. But those in whose hearts is doubt pursue uh, that which is allegorical, seeking to cause dissension by seeking to explain it. But no, none knows the explanation save Allah. What this draws attention to is the fact that this brother has just claimed that uh, these verses are ambiguous, and but they're making mistakes. And that's a uh, that's self-contradictory in itself. That statement makes no sense whatsoever. And so uh, Allah draws attention to the fact that there's things that within the Quran that as human beings, we simply are not going to understand until the development comes, until he reveals these things to us over periods of time. Uh, for instance, um, Galen and Aristotle made many mistakes regarding embryology and, and, and not until modern science did we, matter of fact, they, they believed that the human was created and that the human being was was uh, in the, 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 um, the one single drop of sperm that he was formed and that his head was uh, at the top of the, the drop of sperm. They mm -hmm. believed that the, the, the it was just a, a miniature, a little tiny human being within one drop of sperm that began to develop in the womb and grow. Uh, and, and that was actually proven to be wrong once uh, scientists, modern technology revealed the, these facts. And so if you look into the statements that this, this brother has made, um, you know, he has limited his argument to just merely scientific terms and, and things that he simply doesn't understand. And the Quran points out the fact that the people that are going to be, uh, they're going to focus on these allegorical statements that he admits uh, himself in his statements that uh, these things are ambiguous and allegorical. He admits that they exist and that he, and yet he still uh, uh, calls them uh, and claims that they're, they're mistakes. So how can something that's ambiguous be a mistake? How can he determine such a, uh, make such a comment? It makes no sense whatsoever. He's unable to do such a thing. It's impossible. So uh, continually we have statements such as this and I'm, I encourage the listeners to, to consider the fact that he's making blanket statements uh, such as, you know, he commonly, commonly will say that everyone knows and, and uh, all, all the scientists agree, and, but no, they do not agree. Uh, we can talk about, um, uh, numerous uh, um, scientists and embryologists in the Quran that uh, not in the Quran, but uh, that give their their uh, in their in their studies confirm what the Quran is saying. And matter of fact, let's let's go into that a little, little bit further. As a matter of fact, uh, embryologists Barry Mitchell and Ram Shaman. And the Quran says we placed him in a in a we placed him as a sperm drop in a place of sediment firmly fixed. Then we made him made the drop into an alaka. How much time do I have left, brother? You got 50, uh, 10 seconds. Uh, alhamdulillah. So we'll pick it up uh, later, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. So now we will go to six question to each person with three minutes to respond. Let's start with uh, start spamming. Okay. I... All right. What do you mean when you say a human being is made from water? That is, that is your first question? That is my first question because okay. this what I, all I heard is some somebody has a personal opinion about that we contain water. Well, the air, like I said, an aeroplane contains a lot of air, but it's not made from air. 
we contain a lot of water, but we're not made from water and we're, we are based on carbon and it's not there. So the question is, if we are based on carbon, what is it about water? Why is this correct in saying we are created from water? Okay. Do you understand the first question? I do. Okay. Oh. Okay, so I question whether or not he understands what he's asking. Uh, so, uh, once again, if you go to the website, and th this is very easy uh, information to access. I can't believe that we're even discussing uh, the issue of water in, in the uh, composition of the human body uh, at this point. I'm perplexed by that. But alhamdulillah, uh, we're all trying to gain more knowledge as we proceed. And so, once again, if you go to www.thought.com, there's an article by Anne Marie uh, Helmenstein. She's a physician, and she lists the fact that the body is comprised of 50 to 75 percent water. She meant she lists the infants as being 75 to 78 percent water. Okay, so if the human being, the adult, is 50 to 65 percent water, uh, and the infant is 75 to 78 percent water, obviously the embryo in the womb. Uh, is residing in a place in which the water is uh, abundant and the dominating uh, element in the human body. And so uh, I'm not quite sure my opponent understands what it is that he's asking. Indeed, it is a scientific fact that the human body is comprised of water. As a matter of fact, everything that we see in existence is comprised and created from water itself. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay. Next question. <laughs> okay, shouldn't should Kenny ask me a question? Sorry. Next question. Do I ask a question or should Kenny ask me a question now? Uh Kenny, you ask him a question. No, no, it's it's six and six. So he he's gonna be uh asking six questions, inshallah. That was my understanding. Okay. Okay, that's cool. All right. Um, Second question. Okay, this is a yes or no question. You don't need to take three minutes to, to answer this. Um, does the Quran or does the Quran not contain a rendition of embryology? Did you repeat the question again? Does or does the Quran not contain a rendition of embryology? Do you understand? Yeah, I understand the question. And once again, I am uh, I believe that my opponent doesn't understand what he's asking. Uh, alhamdulillah, maybe he does, I, but it's, it's a very peculiar question. Uh, for one, um, in order, you know, to answer a question saying yes or no, for one, it's, I'm not gonna allow you to dictate how I answer a question. But in answering your question, in my own words, uh, I will say that uh, the Quran is not a book on embryology. It's not a scientific book. It is not meant to go into scientific details and describe how the liver, the kidneys, and the spleen are created. No, Allah is drawing our attention to certain things, certain key points. And when Allah says, has man not considered from what he was created from and to where he will return, drawing our attention to the fact that in people's arrogance and being self-sufficient thinking they are, they criticize and claim that our God, our creator does not exist. And so it's drawing attention to, and, and then they oppress others being th through prejudice or uh, in other forms of oppression in society. And the fact is that we all come from the same substance. So how dare we ridicule and, and spread hatred uh, uh, towards one another and have prejudiced feelings and try to oppress someone in any way, be it mentally or just calling them names or claiming they're stupid or um, claiming a certain group is evil versus one that's not. Um, and so Allah is drawing attention to these, these uh, our creation uh, for a purpose, not just to dictate uh, how the human body is constructed. Uh, we'd never be able to fully understand all of it if he did try to explain. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay, that's enough. That's enough time. Yes, Next sir. question. No, can you ask him to answer the question, please? The same question? Are you repeating the no, same question? I, I asked the question, but I've heard a lot of something, but not the answer to the question. Can you repeat the question for us? He didn't understand. 
Any question? Okay. Does or does the Quran not contain a rendition of embryology? Can it answer? Okay. So I'm going to count this. Or I'm assuming we're going to count this as his third question because I gave a very concise uh, uh, explanation of, or answer to his question. And I fully understood it then and I understand it now. I'm not sure that, once again, my opponent understands what it is that he's asking. So in saying that, uh, I will repeat my answer. I'm not going to change my answer. My answer is that the Quran does not go into scientific details. And if you're trying to, uh, you, you know, numerous times this, this my opponent uh, makes the claim and says, matter of fact, he said it during this, this debate, he says, uh, that the science books goes go, tell about the spleen and the kidneys and the liver and on so forth, but the but it is not in the Quran. It doesn't say that in the Quran. Well, it's not necessary for that to be in the Quran. Uh, it's not a book of science, and it's not a book of history. It's not a book of of uh, cosmology and, and those things. Are, you know, I know cosmology is in the field of science. Alhamdulillah. But what my point is that the Quran is not going into details. They're basic fundamentals. That drawing our, that's drawing our attention on many different levels. And is are there signs within the science? Do we see signs that exist within embryology? Yes, sir. And so that's my answer to that question. That was your third question. What's your fourth? Yes, go ahead. That was my second question, and you still haven't answered it. Moderator, can you please ask Kenny to answer my question, my second question? He already asked. He already answered the questions. No, he did not. He has yes. not addressed my question at all. By telling me that I don't know how to ask the question and telling me how to ask the question, he is not answering my question. It is my second question, and it has well, there's, there's actually, nothing to, that in my question that he's answered. Actually, so is there he, embryology in the Quran, yes or no? He mentioned that. Uh, the Quran does not use scientific terms that you're referring to. So he explained his, his answer. So this is your third question. Let's move on. Okay, so I'm not going to get an answer to my question. Okay. If we are looking at an embryo in the womb, you are saying that nutfa is a liquid, is sperm is a sperm drop is a clot is an ovum is a zygote could you could you tell me what nutfa actually is okay this That's is the third question okay so you, you you said some things uh saying that you, you, your quote was you said that blah 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 whatever it is you went into but no those things that you mentioned that i said i did not say so please don't add to what I do say, I'd like to stick to uh, my own argument and you stick to yours, inshallah. So, uh, uh, did you understand the question? I, I mentioned in Lane's lexicon, these are words mm -hmm. in Lane's lexicon, not my words, that in Lane's lexicon, the nutfa is described as and defined as a singular entity which is a part of a bigger group of its kind. It can be, the second thing could be a single sperm from a collection of billions of sperm or one female egg from a group of many in the ovaries. That's a definition from Lane's lexicon. That is not something that I wrote. Uh, if you want to dispute that, those facts, then I would encourage you to contact Lane's lexicon and give them your refutation on that. Again, I did not ask what Lane's lexicon said. I asked what, which one it is in the Quran. What does the Quran say? What does nutfa mean in the Quran? Not what Lane's lexicon says. Kenny, I'm asking a very straightforward question. Come on. You can't be deflecting all the kind. You, could, you can't run away from every single question. This is a factual question that I'm asking. What is it? If you say you are saying nutfa is correct, then you're saying, you, you said this, you said this has several meanings and you quoted Lane's lexicon. And now I'm asking, which one is it? Which There's one? <laughs> so, so 
once again, I don't think you understand what you're asking. Uh, and I, I don't mean that to be disrespectful, but okay, so the word nutfa is mentioned in the Quran, right? Are you trying to get me to explain to you what the word nutfa means when I've already explained to you based on Lane's lexicon, which defines uh, what the Arabic words mean? Uh, it defines it in Lane's lexicon. So do you, are you trying to imply that you want me to say that nutfa means something that something else? You're asking me what does nutfa mean in the Quran? I told you what nutfa means based on what Lane's lexicon says that it means. I don't know what more you want me to do about that. What's the next question? Next question. Okay, so you're not answering this either. Okay. Is there any way that you know anything about embryology that corresponds with what we find in the Quran if we are using the, the, the four elements that I introduced where we are actually looking at a zygote? Do you see the process of infusing two, two elements, fusion of two cells to form a zygote? Do you see this anywhere in the Quran? In what terms? Uh, I mean, you, you, you. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not asking you a question in this, this, this instance. Uh, uh, I believe I've already answered this, this question in, in my, in my rebuttal in regards to the fact that the nutra is created from a mingled substance. So, uh, can you repeat your question again? Because I, I don't think you, you're, you're giving a clear uh, understanding of what it is that you're trying to ask. Do you know what you're trying to ask? I know what I'm trying to ask. Absolutely. Yeah, well, ask it again. Uh, uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding you, but uh, your, your presentation of your question is a bit odd. Uh, so please, please ask it again, inshallah. Okay. If I look at the description from Dr. Moore's book on the textbook, the way that it happens in reality, we have four elements. We have two cells, one male, one female which are not mentioned in the Quran, and we have the fusion, the process, not mentioned in the Quran, and the resulting zygote. How do you get this out of the Quran? Well, because Allah says that he created man from a mingled substance in the Quran. Qarar al makin So uh, it's a combination of, once again, uh, he places in, 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 the, in the womb, Qarar makin uh, after being uh, uh, created from a mingled substance, so uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm understanding what you try, what your your question actually is. I don't understand what your question is. His his question is referring to the process of embryology that's in the stage of the book that he mentioned. He said, if if does the Quran mention any of those stage? In the Quran, if is that correct? Is that a correct representation of your question? No, what I'd like to see in the Quran is the process of two cells merging or fusing and resulting in a zygote. Where do, because he keeps on saying it's a ming mingled substance, mingled right. from what in what in using what process with what result. Okay, so that so now I understand what you're trying to get at, and which is okay. uh, what, what, once again, um. It seems to be a bit odd that you would go to, to an extreme in regards to you're wanting the Quran to explain to you in step-by-step -step detail in scientific terms uh, how the human being comes about. And because you, you want it, you, are you you're wanting the, the Quran to say, use the word zygote, and you want it to say gamete, and you want it to say uh, the, the uterine wall, and, and, and but the Quran is not going to say those things, okay? No, and it's, I can't want that. It's no, not no, no, that's not my question. That was well, not my question. I said, how do you get the Quran to say this? I'm not saying I want this word. I said, how do you explain to me what is in the Quran that we get this merging, this, this fusion, and a resulting zygote? How do you get there? I'm not telling you what I want as expectation. No, don't tell me what I want. I'm asking you a question. Where in the Quran do you see this? Where do you, in the Quran do you get the description that two cells merge and result in a zygote? Okay, let's go through a series of verses. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it says in the 33rd, excuse me, 32nd, uh, 
uh, chapter of the Quran says, He it is who created all things in the best way and began the creation of a man from clay and made his progeny from an extract of despised fluid or salala. Okay, another verse, 80, the 86th uh, chapter of the Quran, verse five, is, 5 and 6. So let man consider from what he was created. He was created from gushing water. In the 16th surah of the Quran, it says he was created from sperm or a fluid drop. And behold, the same man becomes an open disputer, and which is what my opponent has done here today, alhamdulillah. In the 75th uh, chapter of the Quran, it says, does man think that he would be left uncontrolled without purpose? Was, was he not once a fluid drop of the ejected semen? Once again, drawing our attention to the fact that we all came from the same substance. Praise be to Allah. In the chapter, uh, chapter 80, verse 17 through 19, it says, Woe to man, uh, what has made him reject Allah? Uh, from what stuff was he, was, was he created? Has he created him from a nukfa, from a fluid drop he has created him, and, the mold, and then molds and shape him in, in due proportions? In the 76th chapter of the Quran, it says, Verily, we created man of a fluid or the nukfa of a mingling substance, which, which is amsaj, in order, time. in order to try him. So we gave him the gifts of hearing and sight. Alhamdulillah. Time, time. Um, you have five questions. So you're not answering this question either. Okay. Kenny, is there anything, anything at all in reality that will make you understand that the Quran is wrong? There's nothing that you're going to ever say. Uh, matter of fact, no other human being on the face of this earth is going to make me believe that the Quran is wrong. In over 1400 years, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah says that if this book had been from any other, anyone other than Allah, you will find it much contradiction and much error. Praise be to Allah. We don't see that. What we have is a man here today and my opponent that is trying to uh, make accusations, but he has not in his argument hasn't proved anything to be wrong. He's using blanket statements and innuendos and, and uh, uh, accusations, but he's proven no scientific errors in the Quran. Praise be to Allah. So no, sir, you will never influence me to believe that anything in the Quran is wrong. Praise be to Allah. I believe what my God, my creator has set forth, just as the previous verse that I mentioned, that I will be more than happy to read it again as long as my time permits. Alhamdulillah, I feel like I mean, it says in Surah Al-Imran, he it is who has revealed unto you, the, unto, unto you the truth, which is the scripture wherein are clear revelations. They are the substance of the book. The others are allegorical, but to, in those whose hearts is doubt, pursue that which is allegorical, seeking dissension and seeking to explain it. But no one knows his explanation except for Allah. And those who are of sound instruction say, we believe therein, the whole of it is from our Lord, but only men of understanding really take heed. Praise be to Allah. You know what? I'm one of those men that take heed. I'm the one that believes that this is surely from my Lord, my God, my creator. I, I submit myself to him fully in the state of Islam. I try to do my best in this life. No, sir, you will never influence me to do anything other than accept the, the uh, decrees from my right. God, my creator. Last question. That was not my question, so you're not answering that one either. So the last question, let me just ask you something. Do you think that semen can fertilize an egg and result in a new human being? I believe that 23 chromosomes from the male, which is one drop of semen out of billions, uh, in combination with the 23 chromosomes from the liquid of the female ovum, uh, combines the 46 chromosomes necessary, which is proven in science that you've already admitted yourself during the course of this debate. Um, which is required to create the human being and develop and begin the development in the womb. Um, so um, I'm not sure what the issue is here when you've already given the scientific facts. And I, uh, matter of fact, after I did a my opening statement, 46, 46 chromosomes are required to create the human being. And that is a fact. And uh, 23 from the, the semen, 23 from the ovum. Praise be to Allah. Thank you for allowing me to demonstrate that Islam is indeed the answer. Okay, so you have no clue. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Now it will be Brother Kenny turn to ask six, six questions. One minute to ask question and three minutes to respond. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so where do I start here? 
So what, what, let me ask you this. In the, in the course of this debate, you've said in your statement that uh, you implied that the human body was not made out of water. Uh, <laughs> it was a very odd statement, whatever it was. Of course, I'd have to go back and listen to it. But uh, uh, what do you feel about the, 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 the stats that I gave you based on this writing, this article by Dr. Anne-Marie uh, Hemmenstein, stating that the body of the human being is created uh, from 50 to 75 percent water, and the fact that that is revealed in the Quran, are you? Would you suggest that that is a mistake? That you have that you've, you've said that before. So, are you after hearing these facts from this doctor? Uh, do you still believe that, that that is a mistake? Is that the question? Yeah, this is the question. Okay. No, I think the mistake is that you don't understand the difference between what the Quran says and what, what uh, experts say. The experts say we contain water and we contain water. We are made up of cells. We are created from cells and the cells contain varying degrees of water. That's what I said right in the beginning. But the Quran says we are created from water. And I gave you the analogy of the aeroplane, which is still valid. And the thing is that it is a difference whether you are saying that something is made from air or something contains air. Something is made from water, and I've explained all that, and it contains water, and I've explained that. So we are not created or made from water. That is a wrong statement. Okay, next question. Okay, so obviously, uh, in your answer, obviously you haven't read this article by Dr. Henry uh, Hilmenstein. Um, are you aware of the fact that science does prove that every living thing comes from water? And are you denying what science uh, has proven? You see, this is why I asked you in the beginning, I offered to exchange our talking points so that we could exactly get things like this out of the way, because what you are giving me is the opinion of an individual. It's, it's a logical fallacy, which is called an appeal to authority. I do not care what one person says, quite frankly. I go according to what the books say. I go according to what the papers say. Um, it doesn't really work saying now that if, whether she is right or wrong, this will determine whether the Quran is right or wrong, and whether the Quran was written by a God, and whether this God knew what he was talking about. It doesn't work that way. So if the lady says that we contain certain elements of water, then this is correct as far as I could ascertain. But this is not what the Quran says. The Quran says not. We are created based on carbon and we contain cells which contain in turn some water. This is not what the Quran says. The Quran says we are created from water and that is wrong. Next question. Okay, so apparently my, my opponent does agree that based on what this physician states that we are indeed created from water, uh, which is, a, well, she gets her facts from science itself. So very interesting. Okay, so the next question: um, um, When, when, when the Quran says that um, it says that uh, it is we who have revealed unto you, unto you the Scripture wherein are clear revelations, and they are the substance of the book, and others which are ambiguous or allegorical, but in those whose hearts pursue doubt. Uh, they seek those verses that are allegorical. Uh, what, do, what do you? How do you uh, take the, that verse, the, these verses, uh, uh, and how do you the, how do you apply them to yourself? Well, I'm going to say I don't, and then you're going to say I said I do. I don't know why you say the opposite of what I just said. You, you are giving me a sentence in the Quran, which I have commented on millions of times, because it says some sentences are vague and some are not. Okay, who decides which ones are vague and which ones are not? You are saying, well, the ones which contain the direct commands are not, so you are the, the not allowed to eat pork is a direct command, whereas you are allowed to hit your wife under certain circumstances is not. It's allegoric. So how am I going to decide which is what and how do I know which is correct? It's supposed to be a book of guidance, and it's not. 
It's vague, it's ambiguous, it doesn't tell me anything. And whenever something factual comes along, it's wrong. Okay, next question. I want to point out that in Islam, we're not allowed to hit our wives and cause any harm to her, our wives. So you made an uh, incorrect statement there. Uh, but, uh, okay, so you, you have admitted that there are verses of the Quran that are ambiguous. And at the same time, you claim that those verses, uh, the very verses that you mentioned, in one instance, you say that they're ambiguous which I'm not sure if you fully understand the definition of the word ambiguous or not. Maybe not. Maybe you do. But uh, you follow that by stating that those same verses are, are wrong. So please explain to me in your understanding how something can be um, ambiguous, which means to be undetermined, which means that it could be have a, a number of different possibilities. Um, how can it be wrong? How can something that's ambiguous at the same time be wrong okay i did not say that i said there are sentences in the quran or most of the sentences in the quran are ambiguous and vague and as soon as it gets to facts it's wrong so those are two different statements so if i go to chapter four sentence three it says there that i can marry two and three and four wives but the interpretation is two or three or four wives, even though the literal, the way that it is written is wa, which is and. So this is ambiguous. So do, do I take the or or do I take the and? It's a matter of interpretation. So this is something that you can debate where you allow four or nine wives depending on how you want it. On the other hand, as soon as you get something factual, as soon as you get a statement, like something, um, what, what I said here, like something is made from, from water, then it is immediately wrong. And this is what, what we see immediately when we go and we take a look at the four different elements. There is no such thing as an ovum mentioned in the Quran. Instead, you get a mingling or something or, a, or an extract of something, and that is factually, scientifically wrong. It is not correct. Next question. Once again, you've made a claim that this is incorrect. So in, in regards to you bringing up the word ovum, once again, um, you uh, brought up the kidneys and the spleen, and, the, and, the, uh, and now you've brought up the word ovum, and, and criticizing the Quran for not mentioning, mentioning the ovum in particular. So, uh, is it your belief that the, the Quran is is wrong because it does not list the uh, uh, the ovum and the kidneys and these these other parts of the body? Uh, is that your understanding? No. What I said is, I my expectation is that at least I get the basics, and whatever is there is correct. So number one, I don't get the basics. And the second thing is whatever is there is not correct. And I said, as an example, the ovum is not mentioned. I said we'd have four elements. If any one of these four elements is missing, there's something wrong. And lo and behold, none of these four elements is mentioned in the Quran. Instead, we have this nutfa, which is an, uh, a liquid, an alaka, which you gave multiple interpretations of, but you wouldn't be able to say which one it is. So it is impossible for me to ascertain what the Quran is actually saying. Can I verify or falsify this? No, because you're not telling me what it is. I asked you what the Lutfa actually means and what the Alaka actually means, but you said, no, I don't know. Go to Lane's lexicon, there you have four or five, or I don't know how many different versions of the same word. So I cannot verify this. I cannot falsify it. So it's not accurate. It is not correct. It is not something that I would expect from a God who knows that there are these four elements to not list those four elements to at least give me the basics. And everything else then is false. Okay, I noticed you just said that you cannot, ver you cannot verify it. And you cannot, this is the last question? No, I actually, I actually enjoy this. You can, you can. I think it's nice. I don't think we should start counting questions and things like that. I think this is more valuable than than any of the rest. So I think we should allow more questions. Okay, so if that's okay, if you agree. No, I don't agree. We we have a set format, and I've got. Oh, what a pity! Because I would like you to ask more questions. 
He has okay. one more question and then that's it. Okay, so you just said that you, you can't verify it and you can't falsify it. Uh, but yet you are making the claim that you want the, the Quran to say these things, which I've mentioned before, and you're saying in, in your in your uh, explanations of these things, it seems that you have an issue with the fact that the Quran doesn't go into great detail in order to explain this stuff to you in great detail. But in fact, the Quran does say that we created man from a, 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 a mingled substance, alhamdulillah, and it's for man to ponder, think and reflect on that in order to get the true meaning. Uh, but once again, you said you can't confirm it or you can't, uh, uh, you can't confirm it and you can't deny it. So how can you very well criticize something that you can't confirm nor can you deny? It's ambiguous. And once again, you're, you're trying to say that these things are, are false. So let me ex ex ask you in regards to, in, in regards to the question is, in regards to the definitions of words, in, in regards to definitions of words, do you understand that, that words have multiple meanings? Uh, do you realize this? Yes, is that your, is that your question? <laughs> no, of yes. course I realize this. Kenny, yes, I do agree. Of okay, course so, I realize this. But okay. I explained in the beginning what my expectation is. Okay, so so because you uh, you understand that words have multiple meanings, so in one instance you say you understand that words have multiple meanings. It could mean, um, you know, I, I could say I stepped into a blue room. Well, the word blue could be implied that it's literally a blue room as far as the paint goes, or it could be blue in regards to the ambiance in the room, right? But but the word, the same word is blue. Okay, so it has multiple meanings. And so that's what I'm trying to point out to you. You seem to be criticizing the fact that the Quran is using these, these vague terms, which it says that it does, says that it's using uh, uh, verses that are, that are found, the foundation of the book that are clear and precise, and verses that are ambiguous that cause man to ponder and think and reflect and to do things just like we're doing right here. So I appreciate you taking your time today to engage in this debate because what it does is allow us to talk about these very issues by the will of our God, our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's enough. That's enough. Us, praise be to Allah. Uh, answer that final question, then we'll go to 10 minute closing. Oh, what a pity. Okay. <laughs> the thing is that, like, I, I, I don't know why you're asking the same thing again. I said my expectation is that this is written by a God, so I expect perfection. Now, I don't know if you understand the communication process where words are simply containers. The meaning of a word is associated by me, the recipient, not by the originator. So I apply the meaning according to what I understand what is contained in a specific word. So if I expect uh, perfection, by a God, by a perfect God writing a perfect book, telling me about how a human being develops, the minimum I expect, and I explain this, is at least that there's some basics, that I get a foundation that I can understand how a human being is created, that we don't get all the mistakes we get from the Greeks, from the Indians, from all the other um, and antique um, medicine and, and the understanding that they had. So I expect the basics, and I expect everything to be correct. Okay. Now, if you are saying a mingled substance, I cannot verify this. I don't know what mingled means, and I don't know what substance is mingled. Right. Exactly, and that's my point. You don't, oh. you don't know what it means, and oh. therefore you can't deny it or affirm it. And that's, I can. That's as basic as it gets. We created it. We created it. I just created it. Explained it. it. Hold on, hold on. Don't interrupt him. Let him answer his question. Sorry, sorry. Start spamming. Go yeah. ahead. You will finish here. I'll give you one minute to finish because he interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> no, we, can't we carry on a little bit? Okay, we're going to come to a 10 minute closing now. Uh, let me uh, know when you're ready so I can set the time. <laughs> okay. I, like I said, I expect perfection from a perfect God who delivers a perfect account of how this God creates human beings. I don't get this. And I said that what, what we need is the minimum if we're talking about embryology. Now, I was limiting and restricting myself to embryology, which is the original topic that we agreed on, which Kenny then somehow changed into human development to go off on his, his waffle there. But the thing is that I don't quite understand why it is that we can't agree on some words which are being used in the Quran 
which don't really mean what we are supposed to understand from them. So if I look at the seventh century understanding of um, human embryology of the human development in the womb, then I'm automatically going to go to Galen. And I see exactly what Galen said reflected in the Quran, which is wrong. Now, what I said is I expect a minimum, which is the sperm, the ovum, the process, and the zygote, which I don't get. Instead, I get some ambiguous waffling about um, creating human beings from a clot, from a, um, from a sperm clot. Now, okay. what on earth is a sperm clot? This okay. doesn't exist. Then we have the mingling of something, of some substance, where we don't even know what the substance is. We don't know what mingling is. We don't know what an extract is. We don't understand anything that we are being told, except the Quran contradicts itself. There are 13 different materials mentioned in the Quran as the basis for human beings. 13. They all contradict one another. This is a contradiction in the Quran. But the one that is relevant, the carbon, is not mentioned. So what is the value of the Quran when it is telling us anything about the creation, about human beings, how they are developing? There okay. is no value at all. How long? You can keep going. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Close. So, no. Raki ban ghalib. I don't want scientific terminology in the Quran. That's why I asked Kenny, the question which he didn't answer, what is it that he can bring? I would be like, I gave you an example. I even gave you an example what I would find wonderful, and people are saying I want scientific terminologies. No, I do not. I will reiterate this. I said very, very clearly we took two tiny halves, one from man, one from the woman, we merged them into a single seed implanted in the woman's belly and from this a new human being will arise. Would that have been possible? Yes. Would it have been better? Yes. Is that scientific terminology? No, because I do not expect scientific terminology. I don't expect embryology. So I am addressing claims. I'm addressing the claim that the Quran was written by a perfect God and is the perfect product of this perfect God. And I'm showing it is not. It is full of contradictions. It's full of mistakes. There is nothing in the Quran that is factually verifiably correct. You still have a few minutes left. Do you want to continue or you want to stop here? No, we'll stop. There's, there's nothing else because there's nothing else that I can say. Okay. Everything has been said. Kenny is not answering my questions. We can't have a chat about this. So let's stop it here. Okay. Kenny, it's your turn. You have 10 minutes closing. Praise be to Allah. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank you, Abu, for moderating and thank my opponent for engaging in this debate. Uh, certainly, our honor and glory and praise goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our God, our creator, without whom I'm nothing, without whom I am no one. La ilaha illallah wa ilaha shirik wa la shahru na Muhammad wa Rasulullah wa Rasulullah. In Surah Al-Baqarah, I want to close by reading Surah Al-Baqarah, the first uh, few verses here. It says, Alif Lam Mim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif Lam Mim. This is the book, in it is guided it sure without doubt to those who fear Allah, who believe in the unseen, who are steadfast in prayer, and spend out of what we provided for them, and who believe in the revelation sent to you and the revelation sent before your time in whose hearts is the assurance of the hereafter. They are on true guidance from their Lord, and it is they who will prosper. As to those who reject faith, it's the same whether you warn them or do not warn them, they will not believe. Allah set a seal over their hearts and over their hearing, and over their eyes is the veil. Woe to them for the chastisement that they will incur. Praise be to Allah. I opened uh, in my presentation, not limiting the, the Holy Quran to any particular field, uh, my opponent wanted to, to uh, stay on uh, science and embryology, but the, the Quran is far more than just a, a book of science. Matter of fact, it's not a book of science. It's a book of many things. It's a book of guidance that addresses mankind and the human development of the Quran on many scales, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally, um, and uh, spiritually, of course, and um, all of which affect us physically. Praise be to Allah. So, I, I didn't want to limit my my uh, comments to these uh, these scientific issues 
because like my opponent said, I'm not, uh, I'm not a scientist, but what I do understand is the fact that um, I believe in what Allah has revealed in the Quran. And when Allah says, I've created you from a mingled substance, I take it as I know that I'm a male and that I ejaculate. And I know that it takes a combination of, of what I put forth uh, in combination with the, what, what the woman puts forth in order to create my, my two sons. Alhamdulillah, I mean, praise be to Allah for my son. Uh, but um, so I, I don't see these, these, uh, these verses as being vague. I understand them completely, praise be to Allah, because I don't have dissension in my heart. Uh, I'm open to the belief that uh, I do have a God, a creator that I cannot see, but I, to I totally believe that he exists. And I return to him five, day five times each and every day in prayer and humble submission because I am not self-sufficient. I cannot make it without my God, my creator, praise be to Allah. And in the course of this debate, I, I wanted to, to stress uh, 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 the two paths that Allah has uh, has distinguished from right and wrong. He says that he has sent the Quran down to, to create, create clear paths for mankind. And so once again, in my opening statement, I was asking, but well, what does the, the human develop into? We're going to take one course or we're going to take another. We're going to travel in Surat al-Mustaqim and we're going to try to stay on that course to the best of our ability, even though the shaitan come and they try to push us off course and try to put us, push us into the obstacles that come against us in our lives. But inevitably, we keep returning to prayer and we return back to our Lord, our God, our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the guidance of all the prophets uh, and the final prophets of, of, of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and bless be upon him and all of the prophets. And so we have another path that is open to um, a vast variety of things where they reject our God, our Creator, and they try to limit him, which is why my opponent wanted to just specifically talk about the what he perceives as being scientific errors in the Quran, which indeed are not scientific errors. In one instance, he says they're ambiguous. And uh, the next instance, he says that uh, uh, that, there are, they're, that they're false and they're wrong. They're, they're completely wrong. But uh, he keeps contradicting himself over and over again. Matter of fact, in his, his closing statement here, he says uh, that he doesn't, uh, he knows there's no science in the Quran. Uh, or no, excuse me, he was criticizing the fact that the Quran doesn't go on these details and he's saying that our God, our creator should be more specific in, in, uh, in explaining these verses. Um, and then he, so one instance he's saying that he's complaining that the, there's not more detail. And then the, the next instance he said, and you can go back and listen to his closing statement. He said that he, uh, he doesn't expect it to, to, to have that. So he keeps contradicting himself in his own mind. And so once again, it draws to mind the, the verse of the Quran, Surah Al-Imran, that I mentioned earlier, in, w in which it states, but those in whose hearts is doubt pursue that thereof that's allegorical, seeking to cause dissension by seeking to explain it. So he's trying to explain to, to Muslims what the verses of the Quran mean when he's not a Muslim. Uh, and he does this on, uh, on a weekly basis. You notice uh, in, in his, in his uh, dialogue towards me, he's been very... Uh, offensive in many aspects, not only to me, but to our God, our Creator, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and inevitably the, the Muslim community as a whole in his attacks and his uh, being very derogatory and being very sarcastic. He's basically called me uh, an imbecile uh, when it boils down to it, but yet uh, I, I try to be very respectful, and I have always tried to be as respectful as possible to this individual. Um, in the course of debating these issues. And, and I bring this up not to attack him personally, but to d draw uh, the, the, the line in the sand that Allah, our God, our creator, has already distinguished, which means that one, the, 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 the right way is clear from the wrong. Uh, these verses of the Quran say that. And so you have one path that's going to try to live to the, you know, uh, in the obedience of our God, our creator, and be uh, respectful of respectful of people and try to engage people in a scholarly fashion, uh, fashion and, and be respectful in their conversation. And then you have one side that chooses to belittle and to mock, and we see this happening day in, day out, not only uh, uh, on uh, in social media, but through uh, uh, n major news organizations, as well as we see these signs in the movies and, 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 and so forth, where um, people are directing their, their attacks towards um, Islam, when really they're they're talking about issues that they don't, they don't explain. My my opponent, in the course of this conversation, has admitted that he doesn't explain the uh, excuse me understand these these verses of the Quran, 
and yet at the same time claims that they're wrong. And so that's that's a contradictory statement. It's a catch-22. It can't be the same thing. That's what's called a, a, a cognitive dissonance, where you believe two different things at the same time. It's cognitive dissonance. And and so uh, you can't say that uh, it's wrong, but at the same time say you don't understand it. Well, if you don't understand it, just be humble and say, I don't understand it. Can you can you help me uh, to understand it? Can you explain it to me? And let's talk about this in a, a respectful and a peaceful manner in which we're not attacking one another. I don't think this guy, you know, I, I don't know my opponent personally, but uh, I would, uh, I'm sure someone in the world loves him. And uh, in the same token, someone in the world loves me. He's not my enemy. I don't want him to be my enemy. I'd rather engage this brother in, in a respectful manner, uh, all in seeking knowledge so that the listeners and the debaters alike can come to a better understanding about what it is that we're talking about. We should not be attacking each other and our beliefs. Uh, I really have no uh, qualms or no, no issue with, with what he believes. I do, um, um, you know, of course, uh, as Muslims, we want people to... Uh, uh, go to heaven with us on the day of judgment. Praise be to Allah. Why wouldn't we? Uh, uh, so in that aspect, I, I, I don't want to say I feel sorry for him because I don't want to be condescending or patronizing. I'm not trying to do that, but I'm just trying to say as a fellow brother in humanity, I have no ill feelings for him in that regard. Minutes, yeah. But I will defend uh, the, the, uh, the religion of Islam at all fronts uh, uh, in, in a respectful manner, never becoming the aggressor. Allah tells us to fight those who fight you and run them out of where they run you out, but never to become the aggressor. Many people uh, take these, and this part of human development as well, so it all still applies to what I'm talking about. You have uh, people that are on true guidance that know what the Quran is saying and know that these verses that are brought up that are attacked and ridiculed relentlessly by people who don't really truly uh, seek a, a true knowledge and understanding about what they're talking about, then admit that they don't understand and at the same time claim that what they're reading is wrong, uh, they just don't take time out to, to engage people in a respectful manner and trying to truly seek knowledge. So I encourage everyone that's listening to uh, to do just that. The, the Quran calls us to ponder, think, and reflect, and to consider what we came from. We all came from a, a single drop of sperm when it boils down to it, all placed in the womb of our mothers. And so none of us are better than any other. Uh, one race doesn't uh, take precedence over the other. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said that the uh, the black is not better than the white, and the white is not better than the black, and the Arab is not better, better than the non-Arab, and the non-Arab is not better than the Arab. Alhamdulillah, mean That is Islam. That is the beauty and the truth of Islam. And so I leave everyone by saying, uh, As-salamu alaykum. Ramatullahi barakatuh. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts my efforts to spread the beauty of Islam and defend Islam uh, to the best of my, abil my ability. I pray that he forgives me for any mistakes that I made um, in, uh, in the course of, of my life and in the course of this debate in particular. Um, and uh, uh, I ask him to bless the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessed be upon him, his companions, his household, and all of the prophets of our God and Creator who have been sent to help us develop uh, as humankind in the course of our lives. So praise be to Allah. My book, Consider Islam, will be out. It should be going to press by December, maybe early January. Alhamdulillah. Time. So ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank everyone for attending this debate today. As your moderator, I wanted to also thank my opponent, um, uh, the two debaters, Stop Stammy and Kenneth. And if you have any, uh, if you want to say any comment, few comments before we close out the debate, Starting with start Tammy and Kenny, I give you one or two minutes to comment, then we close it up. Okay, I just have two things. Um, Muhammad Ali, would you come on the JMT and on, and explain to us whether the Quran is from God? JMT, what the gin and tonic show on Fridays? On Fridays, or uh, what specific uh, what specific time? Uh, well, it's eight o'clock UK time. I don't know what time zone you are in, but normally you can orientate yourself against UK time. Uh, around that time, I think it's Friday time over here, and we have a prayer around that time. No, no, but it's two hours. I mean, you, you can come for 15 minutes, for 20 minutes, however long you want. Um, it, it would be interesting to get your opinion on this. Okay. Brilliant. Um, Kenny, what? please, come on. Can you explain to me this thing? Because I'm, I'm really fascinated by this. Hold on, hold on. I want what to is lingual fluid? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I, I, uh... Now, stand, stand me. 
if you can yeah, yeah. test me if you can test me on a facebook we coordinate on a specific day then i'll let you know okay brilliant yeah all right um okay, any sorry. last comment mingled fluid t t what is that what do you mean I don't understand it, okay? You told me something about a mingled fluid, and I just like to understand what it is. What is a mingled fluid? What is a sperm drop? What What are these two things? I, I don't understand them. Okay, so it, which is why I brought up uh, the uh, writings of the scientist, uh, Barry Mitchell, excuse me, not Barry Mitchell, but uh, bear with me one second. I've already answered this question. Really. Hey. Hold on a second. We're closing out. Just one minute comment. Then we close out a debate. Yeah. Now, oh, any more questions? Ask some questions. Okay. So, so we've, questions. Covered, we've already covered that in the debate, uh, brother. I, I encourage you uh, to uh, talk to my opponent to uh, to seek that knowledge. Uh, and I've already <laughs> answered, well, I've already answered the question for you. And I'm not, you know, at this point, I'm going to try to follow what the moderator has stated and give my last closing statement. Uh, uh, you did. And proceed. Yeah. Well, he he open the the, uh, the floor up to uh, making any final comments so uh, you know once again I thank you for for uh, uh, for the the debates and uh, uh, you're not my enemy I don't want you to be my enemy I do encourage you to read the writings of uh, embryologists um, a book a book called fundamentals of human Bi embryology written by Beverly Kramer and John Allen and that's where I got the answer that I already gave you for the question that you asked. Um, so in regards to a mingled substance, obviously we come from a single drop of semen from our fathers, and I don't see what the issue is with that. Okay. And the okay. fact that, uh, end your closing statement, then we will cut the debate from here. Yeah, so let's let's go. Oh, okay, it. thank oh. you, Mohammed. Thank you for the moderation. Um, you've been no very problem. fair. I enjoy ah. that. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for that. Thanks for the oh. good timekeeping. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, Ken. Take care. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Alex, I got. We'll stay on afterwards.